Hey guys, every once in a while it is fun just to watch the chips fly and uh, take an opportunity to introduce another product that we have here. This is the Mill Skill Challenge Maze and it's like an Etch-a-Sketch that you put in your Bridgeport or your manual mill and you try to walk a stylus through this and I'll tell you with the combination of left and right, clockwise, counterclockwise, by the time you get over here your heart's beating wants to jump out of your chest and uh, run across the floor. But we're restocking this item and I figured why not just put the camera in the machine and walk you through it. I'm going to put a finish on here. Now this is all roughed out. I'm about 5 thou away from final depth width and there's no champers on this part. But I'm going to take all the pieces to this part, then we're going to blast them, put a matte finish on, take all the lines off, all the ink off, and then we're going to go back in and put the finished size on. Now as far as the CNC goes, you can use the exact same code to rough and finish a part, but you go to your tool offset and you change the diameter of the tool. So if you want to rough your part out, tell the machine that you're using a bigger cutter than you are and the, C, uh, the cutter comp will stay away from the final geometry. So let's load a part in here, push the button, and about two minutes from now, be done. Here we go. That is not complete. As you can see, it is buried in chips. Now what I do is I use a cutter that's smaller than the track so I can climb both sides of the track itself. Alright, now the last thing you want to do is run your cutter back through a canal like that with chips in the canal because all it's going to do is just jam up the cutter, it's going to pull in, it's going to give you premature wear. So this is an undersized track right now. It's going to come back in, it's going to open up the other side of the track, the, the back side. And so when it comes through, it's going to climb the entire surface. We're going to blow it out, we're going to take it over to the blaster, and we're going to make the ugly go away. So we'll hang in there, check this out. Okay, for all you CNC guys out there, in the tool table, you're going to have to enter the diameter of the tool that you're using. I'm using a 437 diameter cutter, but I'm telling the machine it's 445, so it's staying a couple thousandths away from the finished geometry. When I do a part like this, I lie to it on the first go round. After I blast it, I will change this back to the 437 or 436 that the tool actually cuts, and I will run the program again. And it's like having two programs in one. All you need to do is change that diameter in your offset, and you are done. So let's blast these pieces. I'll show you what they look like when they come out. Okay, anybody not familiar with the blasting process, this is a three-door all-source cabinet. You have your pressure regulator down here. You can dial in as much or as little pressure as you want. Foot-activated pedal, air, siphon, boom. It's called the three-door because the front door opens up like a hinge and there's a panel on both sides so if you wanted to put a 10 foot 20 foot shaft through here you absolutely could it would certainly make a mess when you were done but you could this is a lot like one of those incubator things you see on the sci-fi movie or in a hospital you stand in front of it you put your hands in these gloves and the magic happens inside make sure your parts are dry when you do this you don't want them coming out looking like a powdered donut because that is just unpleasant 
So let me show you what the bar looks like before and after. This is the before. Edges are nice and shiny. Everything was climb milled around the outside. The track is 5 thou shy of being final depth and 5 thou per wall. And there's no chamfer on these. I want the chamfer to be shiny as well. I will do all the hand work on the entries and exits because that's like a meat hook right there. That's a terrible corner before I blast it. That way everything is nice and smooth. And then when it comes out the second time around, it'll be finished. Let's blast it and put it in the machine. Well, you can see the difference in a blasted finish versus a non-blasted finish. That is an awesome matte finish. Takes out all the machining lines. Breaks off uh, minimal sharp edges. But right now it is very susceptible to scratching. If you were to scratch this with something sharp, it would come out nice and shiny like this, which is why it's good to blast before you engrave. It'll bring out, it'll pop. Nice contrast. So I'm going to stick this back in the machine, open up the channel, and we're going to have a matte surface with a nice shiny channel cut into it. And that should take about, I guess about, well it depends on how fast the speed is set, right? It's probably about a five minute operation, it's not too bad. So before and after. Let's pop this one in, get this one cutting while we're blasting these. One more thing to mention guys, if you are going to use a lot of air pressure with your media on a softer material, brass, aluminum, whatever you're going to shoot, not so much on the harder materials, but on the softer materials, the media may embed into the walls of the material. And when you go back in there to cut it, you're gonna notice that it's gonna wear out your cutters a lot faster than it would have had it not been blasted. So you're not only fighting the material that you wanna cut, you're fighting the embedded grit that's stuck to the surfaces and that's tearing up the edges of your cutters as well. You'll see more of a difference with a high speed cutter than you will with a carbide, but nonetheless, be aware that it's there. And if you can take a substantial bite, you know, a couple thou, at least get underneath of it, that's probably be helpful. So, uh, after all is said and done, parts are washed, blasted. That is a machine finish on the inside. There's no cosmetic finishing on the inside. That's a 5 thou deep pass. Two flute carbide end mill, 437 diameter, about 5,000 RPM. Little company advertisement going on there. You gotta do it, right? Yeah, I guess the next step is just to put these in the box, put the labels on, and make some people smile. If you had the chance to try one of these at the bash in California, please leave a comment in the message below. I would love to hear that you tried it, had a good time, and a yes or no on was your pulse racing by the time you were done. Thanks for watching, guys. I just figured I'd throw something in there for my day. Appreciate it.